Hello, this is Rebecca Lynn Pope coming on real quick. You guys know that I have been swamped lately, but I promised I would come on and just share my, my viewpoints on why women are just many women. I'm not going to say all, all women, but many women are very, very unrealistic about their standards for men dating and marriage. So I'm going to give my opinion on this. And now listen, girls, I'm about to be very raw. I'm about to be very real. I'm about to just shoot it to you as just straight as I can, because I'm hoping that this helps somebody. Because as you girls know, I'm a matchmaker. And for a large part of uh, the end of last year and the beginning of this year, I stopped matchmaking. And the reason I stopped matchmaking is because I literally was being, I, I can't handle female clients. I was a matchmaker that matched females and I had a few male clients, but predominantly I was matching women. And listen, what I, it was such a valuable lesson for me because what I learned is that the average woman doesn't really want just a good man. She doesn't want a husband. What she's really wanting are these standards or ideas that she has of what a man is supposed to be. But this is nothing what men are. They're, this is not realistic for who men are, how they think, what they value. It's just this preconceived, you know, idea that women have of who men should be. But this is not reality, okay? So literally, the standards here that I see consistently in women that stay single, do not not get married and the difference between women and wives is understanding one that men are not women he's not going to be your best friend like your best girlfriend you can't talk to him like that they don't talk like that they don't talk that much they're not so sensitive and and girly the way we are as women so if you're expecting a man to be all super sensitive and so considerate and just so everything like your girlfriends, you're barking up the wrong tree. He's going to hurt your feelings all the time or else you're going to feel like he doesn't communicate because you're, you're holding these standards like he's a girl. I'm sorry. Leave that to your gay guy friends. Or leave that to your guy, that your bestie guys that talk kind of like girls. The, your man that you're going to marry is not going to be like that, right? The second standard is this. You're comparing good men to, I can't say this, F boys. I'm just going to say it. You're comparing good men to the men that you've experienced previously who were not ready to be husbands that you were just dating, messing around with. I mean, literally, there's a distinct difference between marriage material, men who are ready, who are ready to be husbands, and these F boys that you've been messing around with in and out of these situationships with for years. And so now you have this standard for a man and a husband based on these dudes that have just been Play play, playboys, fun, boy toys, whatever you want to call it, girls, okay? You can call it whatever you want. But now you set this standard to say he's supposed to look like this. He's supposed to act like that. Oh, you know what? He's too corny. He, he likes me too much. He texts me too much. Yeah, because the the men that you were messing with, you weren't even the only one. They don't get, they don't text you right back. They don't call you right back because they have a more just like you. So a man comes along that is crazy about you and is interested in you. And I'm sorry to say you have friend zoned the, the, the men that really you're compatible with, the men that would make a wonderful husband. A lot of you have friend zone the good dude who's ready to be a husband and a father and give you some pretty babies. Because the other thing is, is men do not look like us. Let me be clear about this. We are the fairer sex. God created us to be beautiful, not men. If you get a pretty boy and they super fine and they in the mirror more than you, honey, rest assured, he probably got some habits that go along with that. He needs all the attention from all the women because he likes to feel like he's it. And if he's 
actually bigger than you, you got a problem. But the problem is you looking at visuals and thinking that men are supposed to look like us or be just as gorgeous as us. No, that's not how God created this whole scenario. You are the fairer sex. You're the beautiful one. You're the gorgeous one. You're the one that men go to war over. You're the one that men literally will kill for. You're the one that they're out here trying to make all this money to impress you, to get you. Quit comparing, qu quit looking at men. Is he 6'2"? Is he look like Boris Kodro or Idris Elba or Michael Ely? Do you know the percentages of men? This is what I just would die to say to my matchmaking clients and the people that would come in for consultations because they want to be matched. And they're coming to me. I, I'm sitting here just being a good woman. So I'm thinking these women just want to marry. These women just want a good man. Nah, boo, that's not what they wanted. What they want is if I'm going to pay this money, I want me a Michael Ely. I want me a Boris Kojo. Well, look, boo, Boris Kojo's married. Last time I checked, Idris Elba's taken. These men are such a small percentage of the population. Do you guys understand that for a man to be over 6'2 is less than 3% of the population? And we're talking all men around the world, less than 3% of the population. Now you take out the gay guys and you take out the guys that are not black or whatever race specific that you prefer your husband to be. And you take out the men that are broke and you take out the players, the men who are just not ready and who are not ready to get married, aren't even looking for a wife, don't want that responsibility yet. Think about these numbers. Less than 3%. Less than 14% of the entire American male population is over six foot. Less than 14%. And that's all the married men and the men in prison. All of them girls. So you're sitting around here like, oh, he's got to be six foot. And he's got to look like this. And he's got to make six figures or seven figures. When you start at just height alone, do you hear the percentage that I just gave you on just height? Just height. And if you add in what he looks like, like looking like Idris and making money like this and that, honey, look, you looking for the come up for real because um, I don't know where he's at. These match, I was matchmaking. I would be like, man, I would go find these incredible men. And they would be like, oh, mm, I would never date him. He, I'm like, I just went and found a freaking pilot, a ex Falcons player. Are you serious? But he don't look, it's like, it's like he's got to be perfect. But you're not perfect. You got issues and unresolved issues and you got a temper and you're bossy and you're controlling and men don't even like to be around you long term. You run everybody away. You think you're so much the ish that you're bougie and vain and stuck up. And men don't like it. And you wonder why you can't keep a man. You wonder why nobody wants to be around you. Sweetheart, listen. Get nice. Be sweet. Men are simple creatures. They're simple. But your standards are standardizing you right out of the game. Everybody else is getting married. Everybody else is having babies. But you steady like, oh, I'm not settling. I'm not going to settle. I know what I deserve. And, and, you know, even when I post those type of memes, I'm like, you know what? There's some real stuck up women right now that are about to read this. And it's going to reinforce literally their false standards, their ridiculous standards. I'm, uh, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm not going to settle. But in the meantime, boo, you're not even half the things that aren't that you have on your list as requirements for a man. You're not even half those things. But you want that in a man. And you don't want to build with anybody. You don't want to build a life together. Listen, honey, you better find yourself a Build-A-Bear. You need to find yourself a Build-A-Boo. Okay? Somebody that ha meets some requirements of who you want care in character, your values, integrity, right? Lifestyle, goals, vision. Where are you two going together? Purpose, passion. Somebody on the, when I made this post, there everybody went off on it, said, what did you compromise on when it came to Mr. Pope? 
What did you compromise on? Listen, girls, I'm writing it in my book right now. I came from dating Mr. Gorgeous. I came from dating Mr. Trainer. I came from dating Mr. Baller. I was flying here and doing this and that. And at the end of the day, all of them were players. They were F boys. No, I'm not supposed to say that word, but I don't have another word for it. Y'all want to turn hoes into husbands the same way men want to turn hoes into housewives. And that's just not how it works. Because until a man is ready, he is not going to choose you. It don't, you could do, it doesn't matter how you put it down in the bedroom. It doesn't matter what kind of values. It doesn't matter how big your butt is and what you look like. Until a man is ready, he is not settling down. And literally, I, I'm literally writing this. So my compromises came because I had these standards just like most of you that were way up here because I had all these experiences that created an appetite. It created a false standard in my life of what I thought I deserved or what I thought I needed. But yet it was a false standard because none of them were men of God. None of them were, were Carrie Pope. None of them literally had their values. They weren't good husbands and fathers and brothers. They don't take care of their mama. Literally, these men lacked all the values that really matter in a marriage. A husband is totally different. Then dudes you date out here, these dudes that are just playing around, a husband is a totally different animal. And so like many of you, I had these standards. I had a type. Oh, let's be real girl. I had a type. My type was businessman. My type was CEO. My type was getting it done. My type was literally go getter. Six and seven figure men running companies. Those are the only kind of men I was in relationships with. Okay, that's what I was committing to. I played with some boy toys from that instead of F boys, okay, girls? Boy toys. I played around thinking I was trying to be serious because of lust. So many of you have fallen in lust. And then you think and now you want love and you're trying to compare it to lust. And that's not how love works. So you date Mr. Gorgeous and he's got the six pack and he's six four and he's chocolate. And then you date the Mr. Baller and he got money and you in the bins and you whipping and you flying and you drinking and dinner whining and dining and at the end of the day now you created an appetite for yourself or you better yet maybe you haven't even experienced it for yourself like me but you want it so you're on instagram and you're looking at people's lifestyles and you're looking at people at the on the scene traveling and doing all this and comparing yourself and saying why can't i have that i want that life too and then when a good man comes along you're comparing him saying no he's not giving me that lifestyle i want that that i see other people having i deserve that i'm just as pretty as that i need to get me a man that's a baller too and so now you have these false standards whether you've experienced it or whether you just want it that lust of the eye, whether you're just, you you might not have ever experienced it, but you're saying, well, I, that's what I want. But either way, you're messed up, boo. Either way, you're not getting married. And if you do mess up and get one of these dudes on a string and get him to marry you, you notice I said, get him to marry you. You're going to be in so much trouble because he ain't going to change. He's, I got, we have clients right now. Married clients try to turn a hoe into a husband and he's still hoeing around even though they're married. He's still got women on the side and there's, he doesn't want to let his wife and kids go, but yet he's still got this thing for having it on the side because he has an appetite an appetite for it. And it's very hard to change unless someone's changed before you marry them. So you understand what I'm saying about standards. Your standards for a husband have to change. Right now, you've got to make up your mind about some values and some character. Who is this man? What does his life look like? Who is he? Because it's going to be way different than your boy toys. It's going to be way different than what you've done. So my compromise is for me. I'm going to answer that specific question. I'm going to get off here because you know I'm rushing to come on and do this. My specific compromises were that um, Mr. Pope, when I met him, was not rolling in money. Um, I said I would never date a pastor, and he's a pastor, right? I was running from that calling on my life. Didn't want nothing to do with that. 
Okay, until I accepted that calling on my own life, that's when I was prepared for my husband to come. So financially, he wasn't what I was used to. He's not the CEO driven businessman. He's more artistic in nature. He's creative in nature. He's a musician, totally different than everything I had experienced previous. Uh, I know, right, Alicia, I came, I'm just, look, I got this build up, girls, because you know I don't match y'all for matchmaking no more, so I can tell y'all the truth. I can be real and raw with it, because I don't need your money, right? I only match men. Now, you want some dating coaching, and you want it raw and real, so you can make some changes, so you can get married? Hit me up. Lifewiththepopes.com, dating coaching. I do it with women all over the country to help them get their standards and principles right. Okay? Okay, Mr. Pope, country boy. All I dated was city men. All I dated was ballers and shot callers and men on the scene and that man, everybody, oh, 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 he's the, oh yeah, he owns that and he's this and he's that. Mr. Pope is a simple man. He's a simple man. He's a down-to-earth man. He's a hard-working man. He loves God and family. That's his values. He loves God and family. He just want to work and take care of his family. He ain't worried about all this that's going on out here with everybody else. He ain't a gossiper. He's not looking for attention from every other woman out here in the world. He's a down-to-earth good man. And the reason I stopped matching women, hear me on this. These lights are killing me. The reason I stopped matching women is I realized I had been courting, uh, Mr. Pope had been courting me. And I, I was having new female clients. And as they're running down their standards and what they're really wanting in a match and in a husband, I realized you wouldn't even date Mr. Pope. Like, he's not even good enough for you. That literally, what you're wanting is so extra. It's even beyond what I have for myself. Literally. And I'm like, boo, um, wait. I know I make more money than you. I know I'm pretty good looking. And you sitting here with standards that are higher than my own. And I'm thinking, I don't know too many Carrie Popes. I, I, I honestly, I was like... I, Wait, I know some good men, don't get me wrong, right? But I was like, wait, she would actually turn down a date if I had put Mr. Carrie Pope in front of her. She would have turned him down. Oh, he don't make enough money. He's not this. He's not that, right? Oh, he hasn't been divorced long enough. He's not, he's a pastor. Oh, they would have turned him down in a heartbeat. And that's when I knew I had to get out of that business. I was like, I knew I had to get out. I had to get out because I was like, my standards of good man doesn't match what these women want as clients. So I'm not going to be able to fulfill this for them. And they're, it's going to mess them up even more because they're unrealistic. Exactly, Monique, unrealistic. So I came on today to just literally lay it out for y'all on how you guys are being unrealistic. And the biggest thing I'm going to leave you with is this, is that because most of you have never experienced the love that God has for you, God's best for you, you've never experienced the love of a husband. You've never experienced deep, true love love. So you have no point of reference. You All you can do in what you're doing is you're comparing these experiences to the past. But the past wasn't it, boo. The past didn't get it done. The past was not your best. The past, if it was your best, then it, you'd be married to him right now and happily married. So all these dudes you've dated or your previous husband or whatever was not God's best for you. And so what you tend to do is compare it to what you think you want and you keep having these experiences and tweaking it. Well, I don't want that. I don't want to date a man with kids. Well, I don't want to do this because it's all based on your limited experiences with the ones who were not the one. 
And it doesn't work that way because every rule you could create, God has an exception for you. There's a man with kids who will rock your world. There is a man that's divorced that will love your socks off. There's a pastor that would be the very best man in the world for you. But you keep saying, I'll never date a pastor. Mm, I can't date no man with kids. Oh no, I can't date no short man because that last time he had a Napoleon complex and he was just too much. Oh no, I can't date a man that's a workaholic, but yet you want a man to have money. Men who have money are workaholics. Clue, boo clue. This is the booze clues. Men who have money work hard for their money. You cannot complain about a man being a workaholic if you want him to have money. I hope that is sinking in for somebody. That's a booze clue for you. Okay, get you a boo. He can be a workaholic. Honey, you occupy yourself. You work on your purpose in your business and stay busy while he's working. Okay, instead of sitting around trying to spend his money and then complaining because he ain't nowhere to be found because he's always working. He's providing that lifestyle. He's, pro he's a provider and a protector. That is what is ingrained in them to do. Okay, so that's what I have for y'all. I just want to come on real quick, y'all. Y'all know I'm busy, but I came on. That's the booze clues. That's right, Alicia, the booze clues, okay? So I love you guys. I love you, I love you, love you. Monique, the book is coming. That's why you guys don't see me. I'm writing, writing, writing. I'm busy, busy, busy. New clients, and I'm happy. But that's why you have not seen me that much, because I'm super busy. But I love you guys very much, and I will talk to you soon.